up. Been a, been a little while since I've been on the stage. I'm excited. Yeah, it's been a while since uh, we did this duo together with a I newcomer, know. Mr. John Walsh. Mr. Yeah, Walsh well. in the building. Yeah, with that profanity button, Tyler. I don't have a button to. We've, had, we've actually repla we've replaced the profanity button with hip hop horns, Mr. Walsh. So <laughs> every time it, yeah. you swear, it's just going to be like. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> How's everyone's week going? It's been it's been great. It's crazy to me that we're already halfway through February. I feel like it was November yesterday. So I'm still kind of processing the fact that we're chugging along 2023. Yeah, I'm in the middle of a snowstorm right now. So hopefully, like the snow blowers outside, you, you guys aren't able to hear it. But yeah, it's it's still oh. snowing right now. Oh wow, oh, I'm in I, I'm in New York City right now, and it feels great outside. Yeah, I heard it's actually yeah. pretty warm over there, like 60 it's degrees warm. or something. It's, it's Oh, yesterday I, I was walking outside last night with just a t-shirt. It was fantastic. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm, I'm sure you can... Oh, go ahead. 17 here. We've got like 60, 62, 63 in Colonial. So it's kind of nice here as well. I'm sure Max can go out, you know, with a shirt where he's at, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's double, it's it's so double our temperatures. Just a shirt. Just a shirt as well. Like no, no shirt, pants, you know. Right? Yeah, no, no. I mean, when you're, when you're that high of humidity and temperature, it's just no shirt. Gym shorts, flip flops, <laughs> pool next to you. <laughs> just so you can get service in places. Max just walks around in his shirt and shoes. <laughs> oh, I, I actually miss the cold, if you could believe that. Yeah, I, no. I, I do <laughs> I believe do that. I, I miss seasonality when I'm when I'm like in places where it's just really warm or or really cold and it doesn't change. I, I do get sad. I miss I like yeah. I like having oh. the different seasons. I want to wear a jacket. I want to wear like a hoodie, but I just, I can't. Mint Hoodies are so me. cool. I know. Six months of minus 17 will change that. <laughs> I do not miss the cold. So, there are only so many clothes you can put on, you know? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we're just going to start things off. So um, we're going to start things off with some introductions. So um, I'm Dirk Turtle or Tyler Trang. I'm the community manager for Yon Heroes. And we're joined today in the February Town Hall by Max, our CEO, John, our Development Director, and Naif, our Operations Director. So yeah. you guys want to share about yourselves, uh, starting with Max, maybe? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to just get into it. Hopefully, hopefully most of you guys know uh, who I am already. Maybe, maybe the other guys can, can like, like John, for example, Mr. Walsh, oh, yeah, can do his you. own intro before his, before his section. You cool if I just get into it, Tyler? <laughs> yeah, sure thing. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> the guy's excited. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm I'm rearing the go. Uh, so you know, thanks for coming, guys. Uh, happy 2023. Uh, it's been pretty busy for us so far. Oh, by the way, hope you guys, some of you guys, caught some bids for this crypto rally <laughs> that we're seeing at the moment. If you, if actually, uh, if you look at the charts on the daily, that is definitely what I like to call a god candle but anyway it's it's early days uh we don't really know where it's going to go from here and you know even though these short-term rallies are nice uh we're definitely in it for the long haul so uh you know can't celebrate too early but yeah for the studio it's definitely been a busy 2023 so far we had a quick break over christmas and new year's and we've come back uh in, to the new year and pretty much hit the ground running so I think for us, 2023, if I had to summarize it, would be the year of focus and delivery. You know, we spent a lot of 2022 working on some foundational systems, tooling, and pipelines to be able to, you know, deliver the product. And so this is really the year to focus on delivery. And we do have a bunch of game product milestones that we are trying to hit this year, which, which John will talk about later. And so the first thing we actually did as a studio in January was to realign the entire studio on our near-term goals, vision, and strategy on how to get there. Because at the end of the day, our core product vision, which has never changed, is to create an immersive IP-driven shooter with Cats and Mechs, uh, and one that will hopefully capture the hearts of mid-core shooter fans of uh, all ages and genders. And... You know, I, I've taken some time to look at the the gaming market today. And I mean, not just games as a whole, but even the, just the shooter market is absolutely filled with these 
sort of behemoth live service games fueled by massive AAA studios that almost makes it feel impossible for a new game or IP to break into. I mean, we're talking about games like, you know, Fortnite is is still doing crazy numbers, even though it's been around for quite some time. Apex Legends, uh, just, you know, new season just dropped. Valorant, Overwatch, also new season just dropped. Call of Duty, PUBG still going strong. CSGO also um, still going strong. And out of all those names, I mean, if you don't include Overwatch 2, which is a, kind of just like a new version of the original Overwatch, uh, it's really Valorant that was the newest game on the list released in 2020 that was able to disrupt the tactical shooter category due to kind of like a stylized look, you know, some more hero-based abilities, but also due to its predecessor, you know, CSGO, uh, being fairly old. And it also helps having the war, <laughs> war machine that is Riot, you know, helping push it to the top of the charts. But aside from that, you know, there's been a number of games and studios that have tried to break into this kind of genre and, and, and really failed uh, to do so. I mean, there's a lot of names that, you know, probably came and went and I never even didn't even come across my radar. But some of the big ones, well, I don't know if you guys are aware, but in the BR genre, there was, there was a Final Fantasy BR. <laughs> I think it was mostly mobile. Uh, I'm not sure. But, you know, that, I think they closed their servers uh, before the end of the year. And that's a massive franchise, and, and, it, and it failed. And we had uh, Hyperscape, the BR from Ubisoft. It was kind of like a BR, King of the Hill kind of hybrid. And that also closed up shop. There was a BR from Korea called Super People. And it, it was really hyped for some reason <laughs> during, like, beta testing. And then there was a massive gap between that and early access. And for some reason, it just it just completely tanked. And I think there are a lot of issues with cheaters as well, which never helps. Uh, same problem, actually, with the Jaeger shooter, The Cycle Frontier. It's kind of like a BR slash extraction shooter. Pretty, pretty cool, decent looking game, but plagued by cheaters. And so, yeah, I mean, none of these titles from pretty, pretty big studios were able to break in to the sort of the, the golden circle. And I guess what we feel uh, is needed in order to break in is, is not more of the same stuff, right? I mean, sure, you could possibly get, you know, another militaristic, realistic shooter that has, you know, decent cookie cutter combat, maybe a few thing, tweaks here and there. Maybe that would work. You, know, you never know. But I think in 2023 and beyond, what will really set games apart and help them break into this, this, this inner circle is something that's truly unique with, you know, starts with IP, right? truly unique IP, which, you know, I think we have. And again, just really thinking about some interesting, unique game systems done in an innovative way. I mean, the BR genre is quite saturated right now. And, and if, if we're talking about conventional BR, and so that's what we're really hoping to bring into the market. It's a, it's a, it's a unique IP with a unique take on the Battle Royale uh, genre. So uh, those are our goals. That's our vision for 2023 and beyond. Huge shout out to the team and the studio who are working really hard to deliver. We have, you know, just about a month to go before GDC. So we're in overdrive right now. Big kudos to the team. And thank you to everyone here and others who are part of our community who continue to support us throughout early stages of development. Um, you know, it's definitely a long journey, but we're in it for the long haul. So uh, I'm going to pass it off to Nayef now to talk a little bit more about studio updates and, and direction and alignment. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate that. Hey, everybody. I may steal a line from our marketing director. We, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. So wanted to give an update and talk a little bit about what's happening um, from the studio level. So. I've worked in tech startups for more than 15 years, and there's an interesting stage that happens in the 12 to 18 month mark that I like to call the shakeup. The shakeup is the point where you have enough experience as a team to realize that some of the initial setups, tools, structures that were put in place at the very beginning need revisited. And we are currently in the latter stages of that shakeup now. And we're starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. That means we're basically starting to hit our stride, our flow, and we're really trying to come together in new and stronger ways. 
So one of the great things that came in the shakeup is we need a better way to understand our goals and our roadmap. As a reminder, we are a globally distributed team. We are 100% fully remote. So sometimes it's really hard to make sure that we're all aligned and we're all saying, seeing the same thing. So we decided to go with the process and it's called OKRs and it was developed at Intel in the 70s and it was later made famous by Google. So OKR stands for objectives and key results and it's a goal setting framework that can be used by individuals, teams, organizations to define measurable goals and track their outcomes. So objectives can be defined as something that's to be achieved, no more, no less. So by, de by definition, objectives are significant, they're concrete, they're action oriented, and ideally they're inspirational. On the other hand, key results are the benchmarks and they monitor how we get to the objective. They're the milestones along the path. So effective key results are they're specific, they're time bound, they're aggressive yet realistic, but most of all, they're measurable and they're verifiable. So you either meet a key results requirements or you don't. There is no gray area and there is no room for doubt. So I'll share a quick example of how this works. So imagine I want to sail from North America to Europe. My objective might be written as we will safely voyage from North America to Europe becoming tried and true sailors. That's a pretty clear objective. Now, the key results for this objective are the milestones along the way that I have to achieve in order to complete it. So my key results might be pass a sailor's license exam, buy a boat, map out the journey, check weather for that time of the year. So the thought is if I, can, if I successfully complete these key results, I should be able to meet my objective. Now for the studio, the first thing that we did was we set our objectives and key results at the studio level for all of 2023. We then broke it down into quarters to give our goals chronology and time expectations. And then from there, we worked with each department in the company to help them create their own objectives and key results that were aligned with the studio OKRs. After a few weeks of discussions and strategizing, we had our first quarter of the year fully mapped out um, from the objectives to the key results and then down even to the task level at the individual on each team to help understand uh, uh, how the remainder of the quarter is going to be structured as well as the remainder of the year. Uh, this is our first time doing it. Uh, it was met with a lot of positivity on the team. And uh, I think that this process is going to get more smooth and more focused and dialed in throughout the year as we continue to do it each and every single quarter. Uh, the benefit to doing this is First off, again, we're, we're remote, so it helps us to see how our goal progress aligns with the company's vision, strategy, top priorities, and it helps with clarity across the team because everybody knows what their own direction is as well as the direction across teams. It helps us highlight the dependencies across teams and where there may be risks in our development roadmap. And lastly, it helps us track regular progress towards our goals. Uh, we built a custom dashboard that uh, we meet every week to discuss and track our progress and update the, uh, update um, the teams on it and to identify any blockers and risks that are happening within the roadmap. So this is one of the tools that are coming out of the shakeup. Um, there are several others uh, from, from new software updates and, and software implementations to restructuring part of our org. Um, and we're at, like I said, we're at the latter stages of that shakeup and really excited to what Max had said earlier. Um, for to, to be for this year to just to be able to focus and deliver. That is my studio update. I know there's some questions that I'll be popping in and answering regarding the studio update and some other things later, but uh, for now I will pass it back. Well, awesome. Thank you for sharing the OKRs and some of the you know information about our directions. Speaking of direction, I'm gonna pass it on over to our newest guest, John Walsh, our development director. So could you introduce yourself and just kind of talk about what you do and share some insight to our community? Yep, sure. Um, so hello, I'm John. I've been working in games since ooh, around 1994, before the launch PlayStation 1. Worked in six different countries, worked on massive IPs, World of Tanks, Microsoft Flight Simulator, and now I'm very happy to be the Director of Development at Lion Heroes. I'll quickly touch on what the role means. So as the guys have discussed, we've got objectives and OKRs, we've got our delivery roadmap, and ultimately the aim is to get a game out so you, so everybody can enjoy it. My job is to make sure that the targets we set are attainable and delivered 
across the whole studio. So me with the production team will sit down with engineers or designers, figure out what their intentions are, what the technical application we're gonna, is going to be, and then break that down step by step into like, milestones and sprints. Uh, definitions are done so QA can test before we go out. And just make sure that everything's checking. One of the major misconceptions we have in game development is people think, for example, you, know, you buy middleware and that's most of the work. And it's not true. There's still a lot of tools and tech and customization you have to do through either other people's software or your own application to get the experience you want to sell. Otherwise, every game would be the same. Obviously, this also leads to changes, as Nay have talked about, or updates, or uh, nice examples I give. You know, sometimes you can plan something perfectly. The design on paper is exceptional. You have the resource, you have the time, and everything is done to the T. Everybody has the perfect delivery roadmap. And then when you put the final result in your hand, it's just not fun. So you have to go back to the start and figure out why, what, what, what changed, what didn't work. There's, there's no sweet science to making games. There's a lot of magic that happens in the creativity process, in the trial and error, in the exploration. Sometimes this leads to delays. Uh, sometimes it leads to shortcuts. It's my job to, to figure out where these risks are, identify them and mitigate them as best as possible. So the things we promise our users uh, are kept and delivered on track. Um, I'll be around for, for questions later on. There's some more later where we can talk a bit more on this for things like um, the alpha release and how testing's going to work or our, our release schedule uh, when we get to the roadmap. Um, and I'm happy to answer any more questions on that. But this is just my first quick introduction. So hello, everybody. Amazing. Thank you for the description of your, your position. And uh, it sounds like you have a ton of experience under your belt. and. Happy to have you on the team. I'm, I'm sure you're gonna be helping us make an amazing game. But um, I'm gonna pass it back to you. Uh, you wanna give some some of the updates for our uh, 2023 roadmap? Yeah, sure. Um, so one of the major things we can talk about is uh, we're planning the alpha release at the end of the year. And I know that one off by heart. So it's our big target. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited for the alpha release as well. So. Um, and obviously the idea by then is we'll have. The game is stable state by alpha. What we mean is content complete, but bugs. Uh, the joy of a game as a service is we're never really content complete. You know, there's always updates, there's always releases, there's new abilities, characters, classes. Um, so that that is the aim for the year. That's probably the big thing everybody here wants to know about. Uh, and that's what we're tracking against insanely right now. Um, as for how and what we're going to test, it's a little bit off in terms of what's going to be there right now. We're still in that exploratory um what is fun setup we're making great progress on lots of our initial ideas and a lot of our hopes and dreams have come through and we've opened up some fantastic opportunities to as max said earlier to, to just to stand out to be different and not do the same as everybody else which is great but i don't want to go announcing features just yet because it's far too early yeah well again i, I don't want to give a date for the pre-alpha just yet it'll be ready when it's ready it will be a selective cohort of people to test and give feedback It'll be, it'll be more of an early access than a pre-alpha, so the content won't all be complete and won't all be there, but it'll be enough for people to see and look at. Again, and give us feedback on that's the most important part of these things, the pre-alpha and the alpha. It's an opportunity for us to, again, what we've done we think is great, but we can get very close to the project and we have to remember we're not making a game for us, we're making a game for you. So we have to send it out for feedback, for balancing, for improvements, for what you like, what you don't like, so we can do more of the good less of the bad or change the bad to be to match your expectations and your hopes part of that because we've got the, we're focusing on the game and the game features right now and Nayef can talk more about this in a second is the prioritization of certain features at the moment we're focusing on game first fun first finding out exactly what makes us stand out finding out exactly what is going to be happening make you guys happy when you touch it and obviously that means there's prioritization in terms of resource and focus for the team on our short-term to, to long-term objectives. What John had said is definitely accurate in terms of our future roadmap is that we are focusing on the game first. We are, we definitely see ourselves and identify as a game that wants to be played because it's fun, not a game that wants to be played because it's a blockchain game or because there's opportunity for yield. So all of the features and the focus that we're focusing on right now are really on creating an incredible experience for the player, which includes the economy, includes the blockchain, but none of the features are designed that players want to play because we are blockchain enabled, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Yeah, we wanna, yeah, yeah, like you said, put the game focus first, followed by the blockchain. Speaking of blockchain, how about we pass over the Max to talk about, you know, 
his thoughts on blockchain, the state of the market, and like you know the challenges that we'll be facing and how we're going to be progressing. Yeah, thanks, Tyler. So <laughs> I've been asked to to talk about blockchain and the state of the market, but actually I I, I will talk about it. But I think you know more importantly, I'll, I'll talk about it in the context of our product and what that means. Uh, in terms of strategy for our studio. And, and and I can also touch on on how that affects some of the items on our roadmap as well. We, we, have a, we have a minor rally going at the moment. There is some pockets of isolated optimism, I would say, um, in, in the market uh, around, you know, certain projects here and there. Uh, certainly, you know, some, some, some outliers are doing quite well. But overall, sentiment is you know, still fairly low, it remains low uh, across the board. And we don't know if this is just a bear market rally that will, you know, go on to lead to new lows. Uh, you know, no one really knows. Um, across the broader market, you know, the, the CPI print uh, earlier this week was was higher than expected and surprisingly the market rallied to it. So that's interesting. A lot of people were calling about manipulation and whatnot. I don't really know, but the, the the numbers don't lie. So you know the question is: Is that a foreshadowing of things to come for the macro markets? You know who who knows. But essentially, you know not just around blockchain, there remains a fair bit of negativity uh, around blockchain games as well. I was actually watching a review. One of my um, sort of secret pastimes is to watch game reviews. And I was watching a guy, uh, a streamer actually called Asmund Gold. Uh, you guys, any any MMO <laughs> fans would probably know him well. And there there were actually, I think there was a list of maybe 20 or 25 upcoming games. And there were a few blockchain games in that list, actually. But every time it was mentioned, every time he mentioned blockchain, you could you could just see his his uh, Twitch chat go absolutely ballistic and, and not in a good way. Uh, so there is definitely a long way to go when it comes to uh, adoption of blockchain games, especially amongst the, the sort of traditional gaming market. And I guess our strategy at Nine Heroes is to remain flexible, right? We don't want to be too set in our ways. We want to remain adaptable. So our strategy is to be efficient. You know, we, we don't want to be spending a ton of time and money and sort of attention to be trying to fight these huge headwinds uh, and negativity that is pouring out from traditional gamers and, and a lot of traditional media at large as well. Uh, what we need to be doing right now is focusing on our product and picking our battles. And eventually we hope to let the product do the talking. We hope to make the onboarding experience so seamless that people won't even necessarily realize that some of our core game components are actually powered by blockchain tech at all. And, you know, things might change. The market might change, uh, you know, sentiment might change. And as a studio and as a business, we'll, we'll be adapting with that uh, as well. Uh, now, when it comes to how this impacts our roadmap, I don't know if any of you guys are kind of on the, on the website roadmap. We can kind of do like a side-by-side -side comparison. In, in terms of Q1 game prototype, uh, that has, you know, not really changed in terms of the game prototype but we're renaming it a gdc demo that's basically the demo that we'll be bringing over to gdc and showcasing uh to to you know potential investors networking partners publishers etc cetera, etc cetera. so that remains q1 uh as as on our website um talking about things blockchain related so we've got the land pre-sales public idio dex listing myn staking the second mech drop etc all of those things for now in, in light of market conditions and our development roadmap, we are kind of pushing back. And, you know, that's just because, again, we want to be efficient with our strategy. We want to remain adaptable and we want to really focus on the core things that are going to bring people to our game. And when you think about games like shooters or, um, you know, MMORPGs or MOBAs or anything of that nature is really the core sort of moment to moment combat and gameplay that makes or breaks a game. And so as a studio that we're trying to go to GDC, prove our, prove our initial product and try and find our product market fit, we really wanna be focusing most of our time and resources on that moment to moment gunplay and finding the fun as, as John Walsh said, and, and really sort of uh, optimizing for that. So in terms of the roadmap, the game prototype stays in Q1. Then the next game product sort of thing we have in the roadmap is a game release in alpha in Q3 2023. Now that has actually changed 
uh, from a game release alpha to a pre-alpha release. And the game and the alpha release is actually going to be in Q4. The pre-alpha is kind of like just the, you know, we, we hope to be able to get it in the hands of some play testers and get a bit of initial feedback before we get into our alpha. That's pretty much the, the most of the changes. A lot of the blockchain centric stuff we still want to do and we will provide updates as we know a little bit more about the timelines around those. But for now, we are going to be pushing them back in lieu of focusing a bit more on the game itself. The next thing that they that I was going to discuss was actually the GDC plan. So for GDC, from March 20th to March 24th, we're going to be there uh, on the floor, uh, and we also have a private uh, room as well uh, for our showcase and our demo. Basically, we'll just be uh, networking with industry professionals at GDC. We're going to be showcasing our build to you know potential network partners, investors, traditional game investors, hopefully, and also potentially some game publishers. And overall, we want to be using GDC as an opportunity to improve our brand awareness amongst gamers and traditional media that that happen to care at the time. And uh, the, the the final thing that we hope to achieve at GDC is that we're going to be using it as our launch platform to kickstart our next round of fundraising. So those are what are coming up at the end of Q1 for us. Uh, we're going to have a busy couple of months ahead of us, but hopefully in a good way. And after that, uh, we hope to be able to update you guys with you know um, news from from GDC. Uh, alongside the GDC build, you know it's not going to be a public build, but we do hope to be able to showcase. Uh, some form of either content or video content in some way to our community, uh, you guys, uh, whilst not being able to showcase a playable demo to you guys. We, we will have a playable demo, but it will only be live. And that is, you know, a lot of that has to do with security concerns. So we will be having a live playable build on our own machines that, that people who visit our, visit our meeting room or our booth or whatever, they'll be able to play on our machine, but we won't be sharing that build, um, you know, letting people download it, et cetera, et cetera, for now. So that is our GDC plan. And I think that pretty much covers uh, the topics. That is correct. Yeah, I think we hit all the points of our main uh, topics. And yeah, I really appreciate you guys just touching up on all the points and kind of updating our community. And man, I'm, I'm super excited for GDC and the build and what's to come for this year. So hopefully, uh, you know, some of you guys might be going to GDC. So it's gonna be quite an experience. But oh, if, if any of you guys are at GDC, or if you know anyone that's going, please uh, let us know and we'll, we'll try and catch up in person. That'd be really cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna kick things off, uh, to go to the next point. Um, just some of the questions from our community. Uh, they've been uh, asking, so I'm gonna go ahead and ask it here. Um, so the first one is from Zabini, and it looks like Zabini is actually in the crowd today. Um, he asks, "Will there be an SDK for Yon Heroes?" And I think this question so, should go to John Walsh. So that's right. Um, so it's a bit early to say right now. Let's go back to what we were talking about before. We're still coming up with the tools and tech internally that will allow us to create the game experience. And once we have those defined, then we'll figure out how much of this we want to. Well, expose um, to uh, the audience for, for, for customizations of, of whatever else we, we see um, there will be value and interest from you guys. But right now, it's a bit early to say. As I say, we're still coming up with our internal SDK. So for it to be an external one and the process of QA and documentation and presentation, it, it's a long way away um, just yet. Awesome. And then on to the next one is from Emberidax. And this is asking about our, uh, the beta testing. Um, so when is the beta testing and what are the qualifying requirements? And it's just to share about that is like, we'll have alpha testing this year. But yep. no, that would be on me again. So it purely depends on the amount of feedback we get. There's no point us making a promise. If it turns out there's tons of feedback on the alpha and we have to spend the time to actually, you know, listen to that feedback, filter and, and action it, then that will, you know, impact whenever the beta comes out. So there's no point us setting the defined date because we don't know what the feedback is going to be and we have to you know we have to take your feedback to heart we have to you know give it the, the all the um the respect and and um attention it, it deserves so having a set defined date for, for the beta will it's just going to lead to either upsetting somebody when we push it out or you know surprising people when we bring it in so at the moment it's a bit far away to say 
and it purely depends on the feedback and the quality of feedback, the amount of feedback, and the happiness level we get from the alpha release. Amazing. Um, and then this comes from one of our moderators, Box, which I see in the crowd as well. Um, what are the recommended and minimum specs to run the game properly? Um, I'm not entirely sure if you know this is something that yep. you know can be set in stone. Okay, but... okay. I can touch on that as well. Again, we're still in very, very early development, so there's lots of optimizations to do. But the intention is to get as many people as possible into the game. Um, with hardware, that I mean, it shouldn't be you know, groundbreaking and, and bank-breaking uh, in terms of the specs that we need. So to get access to the more players, we need to have, ac you know, we need to have accessibility um, and accessible specs. So the, the plan is for full optimization, so we can still maintain our quality and our gameplay without impacting the visuals or the overall look and feel. So again, it's still far too early to tell, but the idea will be to, to get as many users worldwide as possible with average specs taken from, it won't just be for the Western markets or, um, it will be based on the average users that play in this environment, play these kind of games, the, the specs they have, uh, and finding out where the sweet spot is to maintain quality and performance as well as accessibility in terms of the hardware specs. Well, uh, hopefully my, uh... 3080 can still run it, you know. <laughs> but I, it, is, it's, yeah. it still it's runs pretty good right now. Yeah. <laughs> you can quote me, we're, we're aiming for a lot less than a 3080. Yeah. Yeah, in terms of graphics, guys. So. All right. Um, so this next question comes from Kashi Koi. And this, uh, he asks, when all the CTMP is claimed um, from our staking expedition for the game releases, will there still be staking expeditions? Yeah, so actually... Uh, We've kind of had a chat internally and where we decided that when the uh, CTMP runs out pro for these current staking expeditions, we will actually be for now uh, injecting another uh, 500k worth of CTMP for the staking expeditions. And we'll, we'll constantly kind of revisit this sort of like staking expeditions and these numbers as we get closer towards our game release. But for now, uh, we're going to be continuing on with the expeditions. And eventually this kind of premium currency will be usable. And we, we might even try and think of some ways where people can redeem them for other things prior to game release. But for now, we're going to keep the expeditions going. Awesome. Yeah. And then from Chris, Chris, one of our, you know, big non holders, he's asking about um, runway and funding initiatives, but we kind of, kind of touched this on our last time hall where, you know, we're, we're safely secured well into 2024. Um, but maybe you want to add anything to, you know, any funding initiatives or runways? Yeah, I mean, uh, since our last town hall, uh, we do have funding into 2024. Uh, however, in order to, to get us from, say, our alpha release to an open beta, we will actually need another funding round, which is why, which is partly, you know, one of the reasons why we're heading to GDC. You know, obviously, uh, we're excited to showcase our build and our demo and, ha you know, present it to interested publishers, possibly, uh, and also to build our brand awareness. But, but also, as I mentioned, it is going to be a sort of like a launch platform for us to kickstart our funding uh, round for this year, actually. We hope to be able to do most of it between Q2 and Q3 this year and hope to get us another further uh, two plus years of runway with that. Awesome. And then this next one's from Wally Willie. Uh, he asks, is there anything planned for the Genesis Guardian mech holders? Like, are they part of the DAO now? Um, or is there like nothing, no planned utility until the actual game release? Uh, so for the Genesis Guardian mech holders, we are actually, um, doing some DAO work in the background. I think at some point soon, NAF will actually present a DAO operating agreement. But in terms of the Genesis Guardian mech holders, we definitely want to integrate them into the DAO. We, we want to create a kind of like a tiered system so that, you know, not necessarily is it will it be that one Genesis Guardian mech holder will have the same kind of voting power as a Genesis 9 holder. But we definitely want to integrate them into the DAO process. And eventually, we also want to be able to integrate holders of the NYN token. Because at the end of the day, everyone is part of that ecosystem. And when we eventually extend uh, governance rights to more aspects of the game, we want everyone to be able to participate. 
that doesn't, you know, so that includes uh, Genesis 9 holders, Genesis Guardian Mech holders, as well as just, you know, NYN holders. But of course, the the level of participation, the level of sort of like voting power and influence will be different across all the tiers, but we hope to be able to integrate them uh, all uh, in the future. I'm going to ask one more question before we open up, up to the floor. And the question is also from Willie again. Um, so which members of the team will attend GDC? And he, he says, I assume that not the entire 60 plus staff will go to GDC. So that is correct. Not <laughs> the entire. I mean, that would be so cool, though, if we can get everybody there. That would that would just be absolutely awesome because so many of our team have never actually met in person. So to get everybody in the same room together would be just 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 a treat. Um, we actually have seven people from our team that are going to be going uh, to GDC. That includes on this call, uh, myself and Max will be there. People from our engineering department, design department, marketing. So we, we are we are bringing a very well-rounded team. It is also a very senior team that's going to be going, and we'll be at we'll be in GDC for the entire week, as well as we'll stay another additional week in the area to uh, have follow-up discussions with investors, with publishers, as well as to kind of just you know meet each other because uh, I you know I've never met max person yet so uh, it would be cool to just spend some time and get to know each other on a, on a on a friendly level as well are you gonna dye your hair uh, blue before you meet him so, what so makes you think that my hair is not already dyed <laughs> uh, another note as well hr our recruitment specialist our recruitment director will also be a gdc um, yeah yeah our, uh, our like talent, to yeah our, our director of talent acquisition uh adrian will also be there uh so if if you are looking for a job uh, now would be the great time to visit neonheroes.com slash careers and check out our open positions um, because our, our head of talent will be at SF with us as well, uh, helping out with recruiting and talent management and interviews. So uh, get those resumes in, get those applications, uh, and it's going to be a really good time. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for answering some of the community questions. I'm going to open up the floor now to anyone who wants to raise their hand on the stage. I'm going to get you on stage and you can ask whatever you want. But uh, otherwise, um, if we don't have anyone to come up on stage, we can uh, move on to closing statements. Crypto and Phoenix got their hand up. Yep, for sure. Let me pull him onto the stage. Uh -huh. Thanks. Um, so I've got a couple of questions. First one is, um, is Tor still part of the team? Great question. Uh, we love Tor. Tor is not part of the team anymore. Um, this is part of the shakeup that happened er earlier in the year. Like I had mentioned, that 12 to 18 month window where a lot of things happen. While we love Tor and he's absolutely amazing and talented and incredible, there was, there, there was a mutual separation there. But we wish him the best. Some of our team members, including myself, still occasionally talk to him. I actually owe him a text message. So... Uh, yeah, we do have that. The next question you might ask also, uh, and I know that th this was asked in the Discord as well, is uh, I know that people have asked about Wenji and if she's still involved in the company and the organization and studio. And the answer is yes. Wenji is absolutely still involved in the studio. She is officially transitioned to an advisor, actually finished that transition about a week ago. Uh, so there hasn't really been a formal announcement or anything yet. But um, yeah, she's still a founder. Uh, co-founder with Max, and she's moving more into a traditional advisor role and uh, and, and less out of the day-to-day -day operations, which has actually been pretty aligned over the past year. So uh, we're really excited to be working with her in that advisory role. And I know she's going to be focusing a lot on her music career. So go follow her on YouTube uh, and support <laughs> her because, yeah, she's going to be focusing on a lot on her, on her music and uh, influencer career. Okay. Um, so uh, can you, uh, can someone clarify this project? I think uh, it's kind of important for everyone to understand that is this a private venture and then you are really using the community community's role within this project and is this a private company that you are building? Um, I'm just trying to understand exactly what it is that you're asking. Is, is, it, is it a private company? Uh, mm -hmm. in the sense that are we a private entity? Uh, yes, because right. yeah. we're, we're not we're not a publicly listed company. Uh, we're, no, no, we're no, I'm not talking about operated. whether you're on a publicly listed company. 
I'm talking about whether your this particular project is it a Web three that is driven by the community, built built along with the community, or is it a private entity? And then they there is this PFP that you released. It's called a, literally a boundary as to what what it means. If you can clarify what is community for with for nine heroes or what what is the pfp project for nine heroes or what what is the tokens that you've reali- released what is its role in this project yeah so i guess you know the in terms of the community for nine heroes we kind of see it as similar to a lot of the other community structures that have been proposed by other web3 gaming sort of projects where you know we obviously want to build uh, and get a lot of feedback and and user testing from the community. You know we we haven't released our our pre alpha. We don't we don't have our GDC demo yet. But you know as we start releasing these products and we start getting some early play testing and user feedback, we absolutely would want the feedback from the community. In terms of the level of community ownership and and things like that of the project itself. Again, that is something similar to a structure with other Web3 projects, whereby at the initial setting, it is mostly going to be driven by the development studio itself. A lot of the game you know, decisions, the design decisions, the game systems, they're going to be driven by the studio. And at the end of the day, what we hope to be able to achieve is to be able to carve out a section of the game that we can eventually transition from a studio-owned uh, and a studio-centric decision-making process to more of a community and decentralized uh, you know, process where it is more community-owned and decentralized. So right now, we're still in the early stages where most of it is quite centralized and, most, and pretty much all of the decisions around the game itself are studio based of course you know there have been some suggestions in the discord uh you know we 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 do regularly monitor that and wherever we do find inspiration you know uh, in the past we've shared a lot of these ideas uh internally in the studio and whether that you know sparks some kind of creative input or something like that i i'm sure we've gotten a ton of input i, I still remember seeing that that fish gun uh, the <laughs> penguin gun and and so you know we we want to st- we want to keep the community involved uh, as much as possible, but obviously in the beginning and the early stages of game development, we want to make sure that we're on the right track. We want to make sure that you know we have the product that we can con- continue to secure funding with, can continue to grow and develop uh, that build and find our product market fit, and eventually be able to incorporate you know the community with the de- with the help of the DAO, uh, which is what we were talking about earlier, to eventually uh, have meaningful decisions within the game ecosystem itself being offloaded into the hands of the community. Uh, th- thanks, Mike. Uh, one last question. You said Q3 will be pre-alpha. Yeah. It, yeah. From from when can we expect uh, to at least see some content being released to to us? You know, I, yeah, I, hope, I, to, I, hope, I hope to be able to release uh, content to you guys uh, around the GDC, GDC stuff. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't I, know if I have approval. <laughs> From the rest of my team. Uh, but if it whether it's some kind of like a still or short clips or something like that, you know, a lot of it is going to be uh, sort of internal eyes. But where possible, and I'm gonna push, uh, John. I know you're not gonna like this, uh, but I want to push to try and share as much as we can with the community and showcase what we've built so far. Because there's a lot of cool stuff. We're doing a lot of internal play testing. We have made a ton of great progress. In fact, I think it was the last play test that we did internally. Uh, the feedback was, this is by far the best feeling sort of moment to moment combat and gunplay that we've, that we've felt with the build so far. So there's a lot of progress. I really do want to show off some stuff, but it's all very kind of gray boxy and ugly at the moment. I don't know if I have approval, but I, I want to be able to show something around GDC. So, so that is my goal. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so just to touch on that as well. There's a, there's a difference between us sharing content with you guys, which Max is right. We should be able to do that all the way through development. And then there's sharing the build, which comes with um, security issues, NDAs, and you know, it takes a lot longer to set up. So content should be coming thick and fast. The actual release is why we're aiming to put for QT, because that takes a lot longer to set up. Yeah, and uh, right. just, yeah, just to add on to that, um, 
we, we do we do share a ton of uh, content updates and like little sneak peeks into the stuff. So if you haven't checked out, you know, some of our regular studio updates, such as like Inside Dakovia, our town hall recaps, our Twitter posts, stuff like that, where we're continuously sharing, you know, some of the stuff that we've been doing behind the scenes. So I'm not sure if you checked out Inside Dakovia yet, but you can check it in um, on our Medium page as well as one of our yeah, recent yeah. announcements. So. I'm a, I'm a regular reader of that blog, so. Awesome, thank okay. you so much. Thanks. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna move on to closing statement. Thank, but thank you so much for hopping on the stage and asking some questions. Um, but yeah, uh, I just wanna do a little recap. So uh, thank you, um, Max, John, and Nea for you know, being a part of our February town hall, addressing some of the things for our community. You know, Nea hitting on some of the studio OKRs and talking about that. John's introduction into his development director position, as well as some of the roadmap updates shared by John and Max himself, and a lot of the uh, the crypto market and uh, state of the market insight from Max, as well as some you know some information about GDC, and you know super excited for what's to come for this year, and yeah we're gonna keep trucking along, keep developing, keep you know working hard on our game. And um, I, I want to talk about, uh, we're going to have a new blog coming very soon. It's called, it's called Meet the Heroes. And this kind of where we introduce some of our team members in a focus article. And our first one's going to be about our senior leadership. So I want to thank everyone for coming. Thank you everyone for listening and see you guys in the next one. Hey, thank you guys so much for being yep. here, sticking it out. Uh, you know, it's been, it's been a tough, you know, last sort of, 12 to 18 months, I think, for the entire community. Uh, but, you know, really appreciate your time. And uh, hopefully we'll have some exciting stuff to show you. Uh, as I said, this year is uh, the year for focus and delivery. So, uh, you know, uh, excited on my end. And, yeah, hopefully you guys like what you see. Awesome. Yeah, I'll thank you all for being gentle with my first time. <laughs> there he the goes. There he goes. I think, I think the community is grateful that you, Mr. Walsh, were gentle with them on the yes, first time okay. as well. <laughs> Thank you all for, for attending and always sticking with us. It's just, it's always a pleasure to hop on here. And yeah, we're really excited about the retoolings and, and the direction and this year, what we're going to be able to accomplish with the right people in the right places and the right, right focus. So stay tuned. Lots of really cool updates. Hope to see everybody where we can. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Peace see you guys. Peace. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye-bye.